I'm Steve Murphy and welcome to the Insider Exclusive. Today we have some breaking headline civil rights news featuring the law firm of Gary Castleman. Stay tuned. I am very pleased to have once again on the studio, Gary Castleman. Welcome to the show. Hi, Steve. Thank you. Every time I see you, you're handling new civil rights cases. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, one is unusual because usually I'm representing victims of police misconduct, and uh, this case is a victim of police misconduct who's a sergeant with the LAPD, but he was off duty when it happened. What exactly took place? He was attending a party. They had a DJ. And there was a noise call. Uh, the Hermosa Beach Police Department showed up. And as he was walking with his friend, he saw the uh, two Hermosa uh, police officers across the street. And they were kind of glaring at him with their arms folded, leaning on their police car. And uh, he was just commenting to his friend, not meaning to communicate with them. And he said, look at the Gestapo over there. Mm -hmm. And they heard it. And they came running over. Uh, Those the, words made them start dashing out towards him. Right. Okay. And they did a shoulder smash, spun him around, handcuffed him, told him that he was under arrest for being drunk in public. Okay, let's bring on Sergeant Pompano, yes. correct? Let's bring him on right now. My first guest and your client, Mark Pompano, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. You're nice a sergeant you. with the LAPD. Correct. And I find it highly unusual that a sergeant with the LAPD would have a complaint against another police department, but you really do, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, Gary explained that you were at a party. Tell us what, you know, in detail, what was going on at that party. I was, it was at 8.30 at night. 40th birthday party for a, a friend in Manhattan Beach. And about 8.45 or so, Tammy, the girl whose 40th birthday it was, came down to the buffet table and said, Mark, can you, knowing that I'm LAPD, can you go up and help my mom, or stand by my mom, there's a couple of police officers at the door giving her a hard time. What were they saying? Exactly. It was their remember? body language, you need to, you know, we, we got complaints about the, the DJ, you need to shut it down or else you'll get arrested. It was just their whole presentation was yeah. really disheartening. Threatening. Yes. Madison said, we'll turn it down, we'll take care of it. Okay, then what happened? Tammy's husband, Brian, said, he says, what, sh what should we do? I said, well, Let's take a walk around the block. Let's hear how loud the music is. Mm -hmm. Let's hear how far it's carrying. So um, Brian and I walked out of the house and um, started walking west on A Street. And the two officers were, who had left a minute or two before were leaning against their police car with their arms folded, just staring over at us. And I just said to Brian, I just kind of shook my head and said, I, something to the effect of, I don't know why they have to act like the Gestapo down here. And we kept walking. About five, ten seconds later, I hear a voice yell, hey, you guys stop, and I stop and I turn around, and the two officers are running towards me. Officer Sullen immediately just shoulder smashed me, spun me around, knocked me off balance, they handcuffed me. Um, when I asked what was going on, they said his exact words were, you're effing under arrest for drunk in public. Mm -hmm. They pulled me across the street, and he C-clamped my neck and squeezed to try to choke me out, and they shoved me in the back of the police car, handcuffed, didn't belt me in, and he then proceeded to drive like a maniac from A Street in Manhattan to the Hermosa Beach Police Department. We got to Hermosa Beach, he pulled up uh, in the back, and Officer Donald Jones, who was the watch commander, came, mm -hmm. and I could hear their conversation. And I'm sitting there in disbelief because what he's saying is an out-and-out -out lie. You hadn't even been field tested for a sobriety test, had you? No. There was no test. There was no anything. It was just immediately physical in the car and to the station. When Officer Jones came over to the police car, he leaned toward the window, and the first thing he said is, what's your effing problem? And I was kind of like, well, my problem is I'm here without cause. I was brought into the jail. The funny part is, not that it's funny, but the jailer and I turned around, mm -hmm. and there was Officer Sullen, who had gone through my wallet piece by piece and discovered my police ID. Mm -hmm. And that's when he summoned Officer Jones, the watch commander in the jail, who came in and, and the man, he said, we're going to go have a chat. 
They physically removed me from the jail, brought me down to an administrative office in the Hermosa Beach Police Department, and made me sit in the corner behind a table like I was a two-year-old kid, mm -hmm. and demanded that I apologize. And for the next 15 or 20 minutes, they proceeded just to go at me to try to bait me, which I realized was to, was to fight them, was right. to get angry enough to, to do something that... Uh, so they could really me. arrest you, right? They had nothing. Parting words were what? He said, I have nothing to hold you on. Get the F out of my police station. Um, now, Gary, you have filed a lawsuit on his behalf. Is it scheduled for trial? No. These guys haven't given up, have they? No, they haven't. They're Hermosa Beach officers. And what kind of effect has it had on you and your career? They've lodged uh, six or seven subsequent complaints. Over the last three years? Yes. The videotape, the video deposition, is of Mike Lavin or the officers or what? All three. Okay, we're going to go to that. How did you ap approach uh, Mr. Pompano? I told him to stop and I walked over there. Did he stop? Yep. And you walked over? Yes. Uh, you didn't trot or run? Nope. Why? And uh, when you got to him, uh, what did you do? I checked him for nystagmus. How'd you do that? Um, used my finger and told him to follow my finger with his eyes and watch the pursuit of his eyes along with my finger. No light? No flashlight? No. It was, um, it was I think there was a street light. It was pretty bright. Did so. you hear, hear anyone tell Mr. Pompano that he was under arrest? I don't remember. Did you tell him? No. Did you ever write a report about this incident? No. Did Officer Sellin, to your knowledge? Officer Sellin, I believe, did not. Do you remember him doing anything for you to cause him to be struck by you? I never struck him. Did he do anything that would cause you to strike him? No, because I didn't strike him. The answer is no? Yes. The answer is no. Did you tell him he was under arrest? After the nystagmus, yes. And where was Officer Brun for the nystagmus? Standing right next to me. I believe he was intoxicated at the point that, yes, he needs to go to jail. But I wasn't the arresting officer, and I still would have gone through the protocol of checking his eyes. It turns out that Officer Sellen, and this is public record, um, was accused of having an anti-gay bias while he was employed with Manhattan Beach Police Department. And his employment was terminated there. The Manhattan Beach Police Department did a personnel complaint on mm -hmm. Officer Sellen, and Officer Sellen was hired by Hermosa Beach while this investigation was ongoing. The Manhattan Beach investigation subsequently came out with sustained allegations against Mr. Sellen for lying, for insubordination, for improper use of the police computer, and for failure to get along with his fellow employees. How does that affect his record when he's over at Hermosa Beach? Captain Raising, Dale Raising, stated that he personally told Hermosa Beach, don't hire this guy. I want to thank you very much for coming on this show because we're going to get this message out. I hope the officers who are, you know, being sued in the police department are watching this show because they need to check themselves before they wreck other people, right? Absolutely. Thank you very much for being on the program. Thank you, Steve. Gary, you have some very interesting clients and some very interesting cases, and without people like yourself, a lawyer like yourself fighting on their behalf. There's a lot of people that would not get the justice that they deserve, would they? No, they wouldn't know what their rights are and they certainly wouldn't know how to take care of them. If you have been wronged by in any civil rights actions, please call Gary. He's a great attorney. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, Steve. I hope you've enjoyed our shows. You can get more information about these programs at www.insiderexclusive.tv. I'm Steve Murphy. Come back again. Thank you.